Hello everyone and welcome to Van Tech Corner. In this video, we are going to install OpenWRT on the Mikrotik RB750GR3s or the hex routers. The guide is based on the documentation from OpenWRT.org and I will put the link in the video description. So right here we have the specs highlight as well as the installation firmware. So for this installation, we will need both the initial RAM disk and then the system upgrade image. All right, so we're going to install it via TinyBXE. And yes, so this is a long guide, but before the installation, let's just download the firmware. All right, so click on this one and then save it. And then click on these files and save it as well. So right here we have a hint that if you are using a different router OS than 6.49.2, it may not work. So you may need to downgrade or upgrade to this version. And actually it's very easy. You just need to go to the middletit.com slash download and get the router OS v6. And right here it is the stable release 6.49.2 and then go down to this one so right click this one to download the file so after the router has 6.49.2 had been successfully downloaded you can just open winbox and then go to file and then right and rough the router OS installation file to the file list so the upload process will start after the OS installation file had been successfully uploaded, it will be showing up right here. After that, go to system and then package. And then we can click on this downray to downray your OS. But right now I'm on the correct firmware, so I'm not going to downray it. So right now we're in the correct router OS version and we have downloaded the firmware. So next we will need to pack up the key. So this will be a crucial step. So let's go to Winbox and then system and then license. And right here, you will need to click the export key and then save it somewhere. For example, RB7700 GR3s and then yes. So this is how you're going to back up your license key in case you want to return back to router OS. All right, so after that, change the static IP of the wire interface on your computer to 192.168.1.10 so let's right click on the network part and then open network and internet setting and then change adapter option so right here this is my ethernet connection so i have two network adapters and this one will disable so right click on the active interface properties and then go to TCP IPv4 and change it to 192.168.1.10 all right so it should be like this and we can click ok so the connection to Wingbox was deactivated because uh, just now I'm using a different LAN address okay so just cancel that and close it all right so right now run the tiny BXE server and allow window firewall so previously i have downloaded tiny bxe servers and i will also put the link in the video description so let's open it and right now we need to select the interface so 192.168.1.10 and then the next ip address will be end up with 11 all right make sure option 54 is the same ip at the static one you just set all right option 54 yep we are good to go so untick this one and then we need to select our file let's click this button and select our initial ram disk all right so this is the folder and make sure you select the initial ram disk this one and hit open all right so we are good to go so right now what we need to do is click the online button to start the server and allow the asset 
All right, so right now the router is powering off and the LAN cable from the computer is connected to the port Ethernet 1 in the routers. So what we need to do is to press and hold the reset button while powering on the routers and until we hear the first beep and there is some activity happening in the tiny VXE application. Let's just do that. So press and hold and powering on. All right, so we have an update on the application that there will find transfer happening in the background and it should be working right now. So we can also see that the user LED is blinking and we just let it go in like that. So let's go back to the guide. Wait until the user stated let stop flashing and then unplug the Ethernet cable from port 1 and plug it onto port 2. So do not power off the device during this stage. So please be aware of that. Alright, so let's just do that. So now let's unplug the cable from the port 1 and plug it into port number 2. Perfect. So now we are using the OpenWRTs and it's come with 192.168.1.1 so we don't need to change the IP address. So let's go to 192.168.1.1 and we are in. So there are no passwords and click login. And here we are OpenWRT running on the Mikrotik router ball 750GR3. This is not the end. What we need to do is go to system and then backup and flash firmware and then select the flash image. Browse and then select the SWAT system upgrade.bin file and hit open. Click upload and wait for the process to finish. So keep settings. Yes, we don't need it. Just continue. And now we can just wait for the router to finish the operating process and we should have a permanent OpenRT running on the RP7500GR3. Alright, so meanwhile I can go back to my network interfaces and click properties and change my TCP IPv4 to attend IP address automatically and hit OK. And I can also safely close the tiny BXE application. Alright, and then close this zip file as well. Let's see if the router is up and running, pin 192.168.1.1. Nope. Right, so they are beef and the router should be up and running shortly. The router is now up and running with OpenWRT permanently flashed into the NAND flash memory. So let's click login and then let's go to system administration to set a root password. Click the save buttons of course. Alright, so system and then change it to RP750 GR3 and change the time zone to Asia. Alright, so we will sign out because we have changed the host name. 
So let's go to 192.168.1.1 and log in. So this is OpenWRT 21.02.1 running on the Magnetic Router Board 750GR3. And right now we have no internet connections because I have yet to configure PPoE on the VLAN 35. So let's just do that. So let's go to Network Interfaces. And right here, let's have a check at the device tab. So we have LAN 2, LAN 3, LAN 4, LAN 5, and the 1. So let's click at device configurations. And for this one, it will be a VLAN 802.qs and the base device will be 1. So VLAN ID, it certifies, and that's it. Click save and then save and apply. After that, go to the interface and then edit the one interface that will show up right here. So I'm going to change the protocol to PPPoE and click the switch protocol. So the device will be 1.35 and then we need to input my username and password. All right, so let's go to the advanced settings that's good so let's go to the firewall settings and make sure it is assigned to the one firewall zone make sure the gscp survey turn off and click the save buttons so when we are running the ppoe connection it will automatically create a virtual ipv6 interface so we can safely delete this one six interface and hit save and apply so this is the router balls and we have five port so the port number one with the label internet is the one port and this one, two, three, four as the LAN port. So now I'm going to connect the cable from my g modem to the port number one, which is the one port. Okay, so we can see that the PPPoE connection is up and running and right here we have the IPv4 and the IPv6 IP address. This is good. Let's refresh and let's verify that. So we have the 1.6 virtual connection as well. So right now we have a working internet connection and let's go and run a quick speed test. The result is not bad. We have 373 MBPS for download and 213 for upload. So let me establish the edit age connection to the routers and let's check further. So 192.168.1.1 Accept. Right, so the login will be root and your password. So let's run OPKG update. And then OPKG install edge top. So I'm going to open another edit edge connection to the same routers. Root as yes, we had one, two, three, and that one top. And for this terminals, I'm going to run edge top. So let's open the speed test and run it for another time. So I am using a 200 MPB internet plan and the result is very close to what I have. So we have around 30% CPU idle for 200 MPB download. Alright, so I think that is good. Let's go back to the routers and try to enable the shortwave and the hardware flow of flooding. So let's go to network and then firewall. 
So shortwave flow of flooding and then hardware flow of flooding both enable. Hit save and apply. Let's run the test. We can see that the round to handle 200 MP bit dialog with 20% of the CPU and they are huge improvement when we are turning the hardware flow of flooding on. So far we have successfully installed OpenWRTs on the Microtech router board 750GR3 and I hope this video will be useful if you want to considering purchasing these routers or want to try OpenWRTs on this router. In the next video, we will have some more check to see the performance of the router running OpenWRT and we will also have a quick comparison with router OS. If you think any kind of test that I should give a try on this router, feel free to leave it in the comment section. Thanks for watching and see ya.